And then what? And then I'm wondering what happens. Uh, a member of the public pointed out about the tripod. So what happens if you put the tripod on the sidewalk to film something in the front yard? You have to go and get a permit. No, if it's a handheld camera and the use of a tripod, and that's all it was doing, you're not. If you're not taking control of the public sidewalk, you would not have to have a permit. But what's taking control? You mean blocking it off? Blocking it off, telling people they can't come, they have to wait. That's taking control over city property. Okay. so and that it, you have to have a permit for. So it's okay if people got to walk around it? It's okay as long as you're not directing them and telling them they can't go into a certain area. I mean, we have to have a, a little bit of common because sense. Because the tree walls are so big. <laughs> we, we can't write every hypothetical into the ordinance. No, I, I, I understand that. I think it's that. worked very well for us for a number of years. We're trying to, to clean it up a little bit to address some of council's concerns. We still have an issue with public safety, and <clears throat> I'm going to stand with the fire chief and say that that's a main concern. I think one of the reasons why we don't have problems is because we have a, a good film permit policy that has served us for many, many years. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we, we have looked at other film permit ordinances. We didn't just write this, or the city attorney just didn't write this out of thin air. We've looked at other ordinances. We thought. Uh, this was workable, and we'll do whatever is directed by the city council. And I just need some direction and some wording or, or whatever you want to do. And is, is the, the film permit fee, is it going to be, is it $100 or $300? It's $350, and I think it's important to know that when you compare that with other cities, it's probably one of the lowest. Remember, ours is $350 for seven days. Some cities may have it for $100 or $125 or $250, but that's for the first day, and then you have additional costs for additional days and the so, and it's the purpose of the fee just the processing costs that's all we're trying to do we're not trying to make money off of it we're just trying we're to investigating it we're running it through not only police department the fire department we're looking at how many people we would need to staff it and then it's it's our researching and investigating of that application and what we need to do and to make found, sure it's done safely and you and found that appears to be around 350 dollars the cost just to add to, yes just okay. to add to that is we cannot make money off of it we're not allowed to make money off. Okay. Please. Councilmember Gordon. Can I ask a question? That suppose someone has a home occupation and they fall within the ability of all, they're not disturbing their neighbors, they're not intruding in the community, they're not changing the character, all those things. They have to every seven days pay another $350 once they check <laughs> it out? I mean. You would need a film permit for each thing that you were filming and that's exactly what you would have to do. I won't support it. I'm going to support moving ahead with <clears throat> with this as uh, as it is um, drafted tonight. I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, I hear the I hear the comments uh, looking at the you know the issue of the home occupation. I, I I think it's naive to just say that there's no potential for a problem allowing filming at home. Uh, personally, I don't want my neighbor to turn their home into a studio. I mean, you know. Maybe great that there's only a three-person camera crew, but you, you may have quite a bit of activity around that. And, and to say that we can look at exactly what we did with the music lessons, I think the music lessons has, I mean, the, the total scope of impact from the music lessons is probably considerably less than if everyone had studios in their homes. But say, having said that, I, I, I can see both sides of that coin there, that there's a reasonable accommodation perhaps somewhere in there. Um, it isn't to just say that it's okay to, to film at home uh, and to allow studio uses as a home occupation. Uh, generally, you know, when I think about it, most of the, the way the home occupation ordinance is set up, it's for you to work at home. It's not for you to run your business out of your home. So if you're using your home as a studio, you're gonna have people come in there, I would assume, uh, and I know that can you know, be a, a small impact at times, but also could be a big impact, so I don't know where you, where you draw the line. So to me, that, that requires some more consideration. So what I'm, I'm uh, open to today is moving forward with the, this change, which makes this uh, more reasonable and allows anyone using a handheld device, a handheld camera can have lights on it as well. That's, right. That's correct. Can be your cell phone that now has a light and a <laughs> video camera, but you can, so it doesn't preclude you from enhancing the lighting if you want, um, but it's 
basically not separate equipment. So, I, I mean, I think we're, we're moving a long ways there. Um, and, and I would want to do some more investigation thinking about the, the home occupation piece. But, you know, I, I understand the comments that have been made about being more flexible. I also see the potential for having, uh, you know, a negative impact. So that would be my preference, move, move forward tonight and uh, view it as a, you know, good step in the right direction. Councilmember Ramos. I just would like to ask another, uh, another question. And I, I understand, actually, as I read the ordinance, I'm very clear on that, and I think we've made great progress, and it's something I absolutely can support. It moves us in the right, and it accomplishes what I wanted to accomplish. But um, in your response to question number three for the frequently asked questions, and I don't know why I'm having trouble with this, but I am. It's been a long day, I guess. Um, it says, a city council member would like to fill a a campaign advertisement in a city hall when it's closed at night or over the weekend, the filming would use only a handheld equipment as a field permit required. And I know that relates to exclusive use of city property. That's clear to me. It should require because of its exclusive use. But when I read the explanation, that's where I get confused. So you have to help me with this. Even though a handheld camera is being used, the use of city hall or other city building requires a film permit. This is to ensure the safety and security of city facilities. That's only if it's exclusive use, right? So I can go, I just think we need to clarify for the public, if the library is open and I want to film in front of the library, I don't need a permit because it's not exclusive use. That would be with a handheld camera only. Right. Or a tripod, yes, right. you'd, be, you'd be fine. If I wanted to film um, at uh, BWP, walk into the hallway, not exclusive use, handheld camera. You'd be okay. Okay. I just wanted to clarify because the answer was not real clear. So I wanted to make sure, in my okay. opinion, you know, I, you talked me through it. So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, move an ordinance of the Council of the City of Burbank amending cha Title Three, Chapter 4, Article 20, Sections 3-4-2001 through 3-4-2011 of the Burbank Municipal Code relating to film permits. And if you could just clarify the language that was addressed and brought up from uh, my colleague, Councilwoman Ranke. Was that clarified appropriately to your satisfaction? Yes. Okay. Well, then leave that out. Second. Councilmember uh, Gordon. Thank you, Mayor Golanski. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a little naive, and I'm not a photography expert, to think that for certain types of filming that you only would have one light affixed to a handheld camera. I've seen other lighting setups. I've seen people at schools taking pictures. Uh, again, I'm not a professional photography, but it's sometimes more than just a attached to a handheld camera, one point. I was not suggesting that people would have no control and have studio uses in their home as a home occupation. In fact, they would need a business license if they had a home occupation. And that could certainly be required, but part of that for that type of use at home, the extent it could be limited, no problem with that. And I think the people who might be doing that would have um, a clear understanding of exactly the guidelines and limitations, and if they exceeded it, they would need the more formal permitting process. I'm talking about small-scale folks who might be perhaps as a hobby or supplementing or whatever, and perhaps want to use, maybe sometimes sell their stuff. Maybe they're artists and they do photography as artwork and they want to use their homes for certain, or their backyard for that matter. And again, I suspect there's hazards with anything, um, but I think we also need to make our decisions in light of the impacts on people who may, and we're unique here in Burbank with the intensity mm -hmm. of the photographic and filming industry, and I just think that we're heading in the right direction, but I think it's, it's onerous at the extent it's going. And I, I think there should be more collaboration with people, professionals, and not just the big studios, because they have a different angle, but from independents and small-time operators, how this might impact them. And right now, $350 for somebody who's trying to make mortgage payments could be a lot of money. I don't think it's the way to go. My opinion, thank you.